Hi, I'm Diane Marie Collins, and you have entered the DM Zone. We are here at UNR, University of Nevada, Reno, and at Nightingale Hall. Why? Because we are going to be treated to a wonderful concert with two jazz greats, Ellis Marcellus Jr. and his son, Delfeo Marcellus. The trombonist who has been noted as one of the best and brightest and most innovative of his generation. I'm doing a two microphone kind of thing so that we can let the audience catch in and hear it as well. You started your musical career at your studies at the age of 11. Now you have six sons. Four of them have followed you into music. Are you a proud papa or what? <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad to see that they are uh, successful in their chosen professions and also that they are out of my pocket. <laughs> now, <laughs> I, I have heard <laughs> it said that when, when Dolores said that each of the sons, when they left, they were not welcome back. They had to make sure they stayed out. Um, of, of, of working with your children, when you work with your sons, how different is that for you than playing on your own? Uh, there's not a lot of difference. See, when you are functioning in a jazz band, the, the very first thing that any and all of the musicians have to do is learn a common language, a, a musical language. And uh, if everybody in the group is aware of that, then my contribution is not so much as a dad as it is as a pianist. So uh, when you are concentrating on the music, uh, the level of concentration doesn't allow you to stick your chest out and talk about how great this is and all. You know, you trying to make sure that you plan things correctly. <laughs> now, in 2011, you're, you and your family were given the prestigious, the endowment, National Endowment of Arts Jazz Masters Award. This was the first time in its history that they gave it to a group. What did that feel like getting that award? Well, I was glad to see that it happened. Of course, however, there were a lot of musicians upset trying to figure out how is Jason, a jazz master, <laughs> who is 35, you know. But uh, I'm not really sure of uh, the political realities of all of that, because I don't think they've never done that before, actually present an award to a group. Well, family or otherwise. Kind of fun, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and, and finally, I know that you have done many facets in your career, including like now you've started a, a record label with your son Jason and your wife Dolores. I'm going to ask you a similar question that I asked your son. If you had to choose one of your favorite, what do you think it would be? Performing, producing, uh, your record label, what do you think? Well, first of all, I don't really do any producing. There are, uh, people have asked me which of the two do I uh, prefer, performing or teaching. And uh, for the most part, I see very little difference, except in mo like in most cases, when you're teaching, you don't make much money. <laughs> so. And when you're a jazz performer, you make a little more money. <laughs> so uh, I have uh, spent the better part of, oh, I don't know, 30 some years in what one might call in both arenas. I was uh, uh, teaching school. And uh, well, one of, one of the things that I want to say about that, there's been through especially in New Orleans, the history of some musicians who would be teaching uh, math or history or civics or whatever. And there were others who were like a band master. Now, the politics of the, the band 
is that you have to field a group for a halftime football show. <laughs> so if you were ambitious enough, uh, once your team lost its last game, then you could start what they would call a concert band. And then you could teach the, the kids in the group uh, how to play the instruments that function in a concert band. Now, I only did that for a little while. Oh, it was early in the 1960s. I was a band teacher in, uh, in a small town in Louisiana. And it was a, uh, most teaching jobs, you have like five days a week, Saturdays and Sundays, you don't do much. Where I was teaching, this, this small area, it was rural area, and there were lots of parades. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, the Strawberry Festival, the Crawfish <laughs> Festival, uh, various different festivals, and the band teachers in the area would participate in these parades for that. So for a good percentage of the time, uh, my job was six days a week instead of five. Uh, but uh, I'm looking back at it and I'm kind of glad because I had to learn a lot of things about a lot of different instruments that I probably wouldn't have if the situation were different. What an exciting life. And now we get to listen to an exciting concert. Thank you so much, Ellis Marcellus Jr. You're welcome. We have been enjoying the Performing Arts Series at University of Nevada, Reno. You have been in the DM Zone. Come back soon. <laughs>